Welcome to my YouTube channel, on which I raise awareness that children belong in families and not in institutions like orphanages or children's homes. For the last two months, I've been traveling through Indonesia, and the plan was just to travel and to leave my mission at home. But my mission did not leave me and went with me. On several occasions, it would pop up, sometimes very unexpectedly. And in this video, I will tell you all about it. While recording this video, I'm staying in a beautiful traditional homestay in Ubud in Bali. And these kind of traditional houses show the importance of family, generations living together on one compound, taking care of each other. In Bali, everything is seen as a blessing and it's getting blessed. The houses, the ground, even the scooters, and also children are seen as a blessing. And not ever have I seen in a country so many fathers playing and walking around with their children, even carrying them in baby carriers. Despite this, around 500,000 children in Indonesia are living in an orphanage, according to a research done by Lumos. Check the description below. While the plan was not to take my mission on this trip, it went with me. While traveling, of course, I tell people when they ask me what I do, that I raise awareness that children belong in families and not in institutions like orphanages or children's homes. And during these two months, I talked to dozens of people, backpackers, travelers from abroad, but also local Indonesian people. The good news is none of the backpackers or travelers had any plans of volunteering in an orphanage. Some Indonesian did support an orphanage, but now they probably think differently. But none of the people I met was familiar with the fact that 80% of all children living in an orphanage have at least one living parent. In Indonesia, that number is 94. So 94% of all the children living in an orphanage in Indonesia have at least one living parent. And even if they don't have parents, they have other family members who could take care of them given the right support. During this trip, I also met three other travelers who themselves grew up in an orphanage in Europe around 50, 60 years ago. Candidly, they shared their personal stories with me. Well, one of the stories was from an almost 50 year old man. He lived with his parents, but it was a very dysfunctional family. When he was seven years old, a social worker came to his home, took him, put him in a car and drove him to a children's home where he was told, this is your new home for the rest of your life. But every weekend he was sent home to one of his parents, which in the meantime had divorced. A very confusing time for him. Nevertheless, he also told me that growing up in that children's home was a good thing for him. It gave him the structure he needed which was lacking at home. And when we discussed more about the reason of family separation, he told me that there was no support to address the situation at home. Our encounter was too short and too fresh to go more into depth, but I cannot help to wonder to what extent this experience has left some traumas in his life, listening to his story. The other story was a story of two sisters I met. Their parents died when they were very young, and for a short period of time, they and their two other sisters grew up with a loving grandmother. But she didn't have the money to send them all four to school, so she saw no other option than to place them in an orphanage. They told me about the deep scars this experience had had on them. A sense of belonging, a sense of home was deeply missing. They realized this even more when they became parents themselves. Their story proved again that we really need to make a change away from institutional care towards a family-based care approach. Because what if we would have used the resources, time and energy to support the grandmother instead of removing these sisters from her loving care? 
because raising a child in an institution costs six to ten times more than raising a child in a family. Another encounter was when I took the ferry from Java to Bali. Shortly after we left the harbor, a lady who was sitting behind some kind of a desk stood up and handed everyone an envelope. On the envelope, I saw two words that I already knew, Panti Aswan, which means orphanage. In other words, it was a collection for an orphanage. A term which can be misleading or which is misleading because we think that these children have no one to take care of them. But as we have seen, 94% of all the children who grow up in an institution like an orphanage in Indonesia have at least one living parent. When I received the envelope, I could have stayed quiet. I was on holiday. But for those who know and follow me, know that I needed to know more. With the help of a fellow Indonesian traveler, uh, because the lady did not speak English and he did, I started a conversation with her and with him. Of course, I told her that I appreciated her for having a good heart for vulnerable children. And I asked if she could tell me more about the orphanage. The orphanage offers shelter to 150 children. Well, you can feed, dress, and send 150 kids to school. But even the best orphanages with the best circumstances cannot give 150 children the personal attention a child needs to thrive. Because the lady and my interpreter were both Muslims, I talked about the story of their Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. The Prophet himself was an orphan. His parent died when he was very young, first his father, and at the age of six, he also lost his mother. He then grew up under the care of his grandfather until he died, and then his uncle took him under his care. So he grew up with family. And also the Hadith, the collection of sayings by the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, talks about the importance of family and how to take care of orphans and widows. Do you know that within Islamic law, a child already has rights even before conception? And one of their rights is to grow up with family. This is also stated in Article 9 of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which Indonesia ratified in 1990. But it's also stated in Article 14 of the Indonesian Child Protection Law. Every child has the right to be raised by his or her own parents. And as grown-ups, we need to honor and protect that right. We had a very good conversation and they thanked me for my contribution. Well, I hope I planted some seeds with him and with her and we changed the life of vulnerable children in the future. And I also hope that this video was informative for you. If yes, hit the like and subscribe button below and help me to share the message that children belong in safe and loving families. Thank you.